Good morning, everybody. This is Heidi, and you are watching Heidi Creates. It is Friday morning, and I am going to show you today how to make these dorset buttons. I got my coffee here this morning, and um, I'm ready to go. So I hope you are too. A little business. If you haven't already, please subscribe and click the little bell right next to the subscribe button. That way, you get the notifications every time I put a new video out. And they come out every Friday at 6 p.m. Central Time. So let's get started on this. We'll see you on the other side. Like I said, we are going to be making these little dorset buttons. And, um, I do believe that these originated in Europe. Um, I don't know the history behind it, but you could do that. You can look it up, Google it, find out what uh, the history is behind these. But they are adorable little buttons. All you need to make a dorset button is you need something that's ring shaped. And I got these little plastic rings right here. And this one here was made on one of these type of rings. And then... The large one here, I actually made that one on these little um, curtain rings. And all I had to do was just, um, you know, bend the wire to uh, get this off of here. And I'm left with a ring. These are joined together. And it really, uh, if they're not joined, maybe put a piece of tape or something around it so that you join. Because if you have a... Um, if it's not joined, your thread might slip inside there and you don't want that happening while you're working on that. Obviously, the bigger the ring, the more thread it's going to take. Um, I use the DMC thread. It also comes in different thicknesses. For these, I used um, just some of your more standard size DMC thread. The 25, I believe, is the size of this. And um, it you can count on using up pretty much a whole uh, package of your your thread when you make these. You're using quite a bit of thread, and you can see it's really fun to um, you know switch out your colors, do different ones. You always have to do the same color. I'll also show you um, one of the ways that I've used the um, dorset buttons, you know, you could use them for making brooches. You can um, put other embellishments on them. I haven't done that with these yet. But another way of doing a dorset button is um, turning the inside into a bouquet of flowers. And I used this as an embellishment to this wall hanging. Um, so you can really have fun with those. So we'll go ahead and get started with this. Um, I'm going to pull out a needle that I like to use. You don't have to use this one, one this large. Um, and I couldn't even tell you how big it is, but I think it, it's probably something I got from an upholstery uh, pack of needles that I had. So that's just my personal preference. As long as you can get your thread through the needle, I mean, even something like this could work. But get something stout enough. This is not delicate work because you're going to be doing some, you know, some real pushing through. So, um, yeah, don't do anything. Don't get anything too delicate as far as a needle. I um, just have a little pair of scissors on hand for snipping the ends. And we'll get started. So I decided I'm going to use these two tones of gray. This is kind of a blue gray here. I'm going to start with that one. And, you know, work with as much as you are comfortable with working with. I, I think, though, I like to use maybe about uh, six feet, maybe more. Um, as long so I think I measured out three yards um, of the thread and threading my needle here and then I'm doubling back on my thread so that it's not quite so long <laughs> as far as a working thread. I mean, you, but you're not making any knots or anything like that, so you don't have to worry about that. Just make sure you have one side that's longer than the other. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and work on 
one of my smaller rings, this, this white one here. I want to get the end of this, and what I do is I just kind of lay it um, on the ring, and I'm holding it with my thumb so that the end is caught under my thumb. And it is helpful when you have a long piece of thread just to kind of move everything else out of your way so that you're not um, snagging things. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up through the center of the ring with my needle. And then with this thread that's here, I'm going to go under it. So basically, it's a loop, but it's hard to show you that with such a long piece of thread. So here you go. You can kind of see here how that works. So my thread is on top. I went over the ring, through the center, and then under this loop, inside the loop. And then I'm going to pull that. And I'm not worrying about it being so super tight, um, but you want it to be firm. You want it to be snug. All right, so I'm coming up, and I, I like to hold the thread just over my finger. So we'll do that again. Up through the center and through the loop or under this thread. And then pulling it through. And you can see that it creates this little bump up here and that is uh, what we also use for, like if you want to do, um, we use that little bump that's like a ridge around that that we, we would use if you want to make the, um, the scalloped or the ruffled edges on the outside. So continue doing that. I'll show you again one more time. <clears throat> Up through the circle, under the thread. And obviously, the longer piece of thread that you can work with, the less often, sorry, my end from, that you have to add another piece on. So you can see, get up here close, you can see there's that ridge right along the top. Okay, just in case you couldn't see, so I got this thread over my finger, coming up through the center of the ring, and then under the thread that's on my finger. And especially when you're working on a small ring like I am, this actually doesn't take that long. So you can see this nice little ridge happening right here on the top. If you're not making the little scallop edges around there, a lot of um, people will turn that edge to the inside once they get done. Um, I don't know. I kind of like the... But if you want a seamless... I, I like that little ridge. But if you like that seamless look and you're not putting the ruffled edge on, I'll show you how at the end we just turn that right towards the center. But I'm going to go ahead and continue all the way around the ring. When I get close to the end, then I will bring you back and show you how we finish up. So I wanted to show you, just in case you don't put enough of the thread on your needle <clears throat> to make it all the way around the ring, how do you add a new thread? All right, so let's just say I've run out of thread. And I want to leave enough of a tail that I can lay that down over the ring so when I start the new one I can actually sew right over this end so it's very nicely kept or tight underneath that ring. So this is, let's just say this is my new thread. I got the short piece right here but if I had my new thread what I would do is I would actually come from back here under these threads and just kind of travel along the ring. And then come out where I need to start. But by doing that, I'm tucking my end underneath these wraps. And then that would keep it um, 
from coming undone because those would hold that in. So you can actually, you know, come in back even further if, if you wanted to, you know, you would just have to come out. Obviously your needle is straight. You can't follow the arc. So you'd have to come out and then go back in and, and travel all the way until you got to here. Um, and again, just leaving enough of an end on that so that when you start the new one, you would be going right over it. So that's how you would start a new thread, just in case you don't have enough to finish up the whole ring. The things I wanted to mention too, as you're working around, you can give it a little push just to push those threads together, making sure you don't have any gaps in there. But when you're getting kind of close, when you're getting close, not just kind of, when you are getting close, to um, where you began the circle, what to do with this thread. And basically it's the same idea of what I showed you when, when you're adding a new piece is you wanna bury your end. And to do that, all I'm going to do is just lay it my th end, lay the end along the, the ring. And then I'm just gonna hold it over here on this side. And then now, so I have my thread laying along the ring right there and so I'm just going to continue on with my stitches going right over that end and that will keep it snug and from coming undone anytime in the future and you can see right there where it's coming out so I'm just going to continue with a few more stitches just to fill this out I am very close to the end here. You can see there's a little bit of white showing right there. Obviously, the inside ring dimensions are smaller than the outside of the ring. So it's gonna take a few more for the outside to get covered. There, that is done. I'm just gonna go under a few of the stitches just to join this with the other side. Okay, does that make sense here? I just kind of pulled it apart there so you can see. But I'm gonna go under the stitches from where I began and then come out, you know, a couple of stitches on the other side. And what this is going to do Oops. is that it's going to join the end to the beginning and then just kind of fiddle with it until you get your you know move it around a little bit if you need to just to even it out so we have the end that's from where we started and I have these little tiny embroidery scissors which I love them and they get so nice and close you can snip that and then the threads just cover that up. And you would do the same thing if you had, um, if you had to join in another piece, if you had any more ends sticking out, just go ahead and snip them at this point. So I still have quite a bit of thread left on here. I'm not changing my color at this point. But what we, what we want to do now is we want to make spokes on a wheel. And, and that's what we did here on this one. You, you can see there's spokes on a wheel, basically. So you want to try and keep this as even as you can and also work in, um, if you're left-handed, you probably want to work in a counterclockwise direction. If you're like me and you're right-handed, clockwise works well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start wrapping and I'm just going to go down to six o'clock and come back up to 12. And then I'm going to switch. I'm going to go down to like seven o'clock and then up to one o'clock. And so I'm going to continue doing that. Just e make it as even as I possibly can. So every time you come down, you're going to a new position. And every time you go up, you're going to a new position. And you basically want to do this until you have 
filled the entire thing with your spokes. Now, if you feel like you need to, you can go back and make some adjustments. I'm going to go back just a couple, just because I feel like this one is a little too close right here. And if I come out a little bit further, it'll make it more even. There we go. I like that better. Okay. So now we need to make the hub of <laughs> these spokes. So I'm going to come up. In between some of these spokes kind of the opposite side of where I just went my last wrap up there and you're wanting to separate these spokes into their each each of their position so you're wanting to find basically as best as you can just go straight up And I need to move my end. There we go. And so you can see in there, I'm kind of gathering that up. Okay, so I'm going to also keep working. For me, it just works this way. If I just kind of keep working in a clockwise position. So my next, I want to separate these then. It just kind of helps me keep track of things if I just move one position over and go in the same direction. That way I just don't get lost. I can get lost easily. Okay, so I came up there last, so now I'm gonna come over here for these spokes. And then come down this one. But let me finish the upward, and now I'll go down in between these spokes. So this is where I last came up. So I'm going to go right to the left of that. Because again, I'm working, I think, clockwise. This is where I went down last time. So now I'm going to go down the next one over. Pulling that snugly. And I'm, I'm holding between my fingers. I don't know if you can see that. When I come down, I'm holding it. In between my fingers just to keep it taut okay this might require glasses <laughs> so I came through here last so now I'm gonna come through here and I went down this one last so this one So I'm going to keep doing this until I have separated every single one. I think I just about have it here. I think I'm going to come up right, do one more, this one, and this one, and then I will have separated them. So now I've got the little hub, <laughs> that's you want to call it, the center hub, um, to my little wheel of spokes. So now, the next step, and again, I'm going to keep the same color. The next step is to weave around, basically, kind of weave, it's kind of weaving, but you do a full wrap around all the spokes. And so looking at where I'm at, so I came, I went down in this one. 
So I'm going to come up to the right of that, right next to it, and go down to the left. So I'm basically wrapping that spoke that I just went around. I'll do that again. So my thread is on in between this one. Okay. So I want to come up to the next one. So I'm going to move two spaces over. So my thread's here. I'm moving one, two spaces over because my next thread I need to wrap is this spoke. So I'm coming over two spaces and then going back over the top of the spoke that was to my left. And basically I'm doing a wrap around it. It'll get easier to see as I go along. So I came down here. I just wrapped this spoke right here. I need to wrap this one. So I'm going to come up on to the right side of it and then go down on the left side of it. Okay. Hope that's working out. I'm trying to make sure I can show you in the light here. A little better. All right, I just wrapped this spoke right here. Okay, so now we want to wrap this one. So we're moving in a clockwise uh, direction. So I'm going to go on to the right side of the one I have to wrap and then go down on the left side of it. So you can see where the thread is moving over that thread and it's wrapping itself around. All right, I need to wrap this one. So I'm coming up on the right, down on the left. Next one I have to wrap is that one. So you come up on the right of it, down on the left of it. But if you keep moving in the same direction, you'll see which ones you need to wrap. And you always come up on the right side of it, and then down on the left side of it. And that would be different, obviously, if you're left-handed and you're moving in the other direction. You would just come up on the left side and go down on the right. So I am going to go ahead, rather than bore you with this hole filling in, I'm going to go ahead and just keep on going and I'll come back and show you the next step. I have finished um, wrapping all the spokes and at this point you could actually stop. Um, if you don't want to do the scallops, you don't have to do that part. This is a great opportunity to show you how to end your threads. I did use um, a large enough piece um, to do this entire thing that I've done so far. And I think I call that a win because you know what? I hate interrupting my work by having to change my thread out. But that's okay. If you do, no problem. <laughs> Can, you can go actually anywhere. You can go inside the spokes if you want it to go on the back side of the spokes. You know, it's a nice tight area to tuck your thread. You can do that. You can do it along the back of this ring. And this is why you want a sturdy needle. That's going to actually um, be plenty tight enough. I'm not going to bother with going doing any more than that. And then just snip it off in the middle. I'll go ahead and uh, thread up my needle with this uh, lighter gray color. So I have my new color threaded on the needle, and I think I put about three and a half yards on there. You do what's your, what you're comfortable with. I just don't like starting a new thread. I like to have the same piece of thread all the way through. I'm just silly that way. Anyway, um, so we're going to do the scallops, and I'm going to use where the spokes wrap around as my indicator for each of my scallop to use the spokes as my spacer. So um, we're going to do like I've told you before, and, and, and that is um, just using the back side to bury my thread. And then I'm going to come up where I want to start. 
my first scallop. Because I'm starting one, I think I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to go back in and I got to use my glossy gray thread if I don't have to and come out at the next spot where the spoke is. Okay, so you can kind of see there. Now I'm just going to pull that end and I'm going to leave a little bit hanging out because I'm going to be pulling a little bit, tugging on that, and I don't want to, you know, if the end is down here, I don't want to be tugging it out. So this is right at the top or right above that spoke there, and I want to make my loops or my scallops, or whatever you want, my ruffle edges, um, with the spacing of the spokes. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to, I'm always going to come from back to front and so I'm just coming through that ridge that we left in there just coming through the threads at the top and then this is pretty much you have to gauge this just by eyeballing it there's nothing to you know tell you how far to pull it's really up to you and and that's just deciding how big you want your scallop so especially on that first one, you don't, you don't want to be careful not to pull it. But So we'll leave that down. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come from the back to the front. And I'm doing it right over my spoke. And I'm going to pull that until it looks like it is about the same size is the one next to it and actually I need to I actually went through that loop and I did not want to do that so I'm going to do that all the way around of these spokes creating these loops and actually if I go under this I don't have to worry about being through that the wrong way. Well, I've gone around once making the loops and I'm gonna go ahead and go around the second time. Same thing, you're just gonna go in from the back to the front in pretty much the same location that you did last time. You're just doubling your threads. So I will go ahead and just go all the way around and then I'll show you the next step. I've made the double loops all the way around and now it's time to make those look pretty. So remember that stitch we did at the very beginning when we wrapped the ring? That's pretty much what we're gonna do on these loops. So again, I'm moving in a clockwise direction if you're, if you're right-handed. So I'm coming from the back side of the loop, inside that loop, under this thread. And I try to do the same amount of stitches on each of the loops. So coming from the back, in, from inside the loop, under this thread, and pulling it. But you're gonna fill the loop up with these stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the loop on the right of this one. It's the direction we're working in. Come out through the center. You don't really change anything. You just move along. Just keep doing what you're doing. Just keeping in that same clockwise direction. So really there's no um, other tricks. Just keep on doing what you're doing here and make your way all the way around. I have gone all the way around and I'm back to the beginning and just so that um, these scallops are joined together I finished the last one on this one now I want to join it with this one over here so I'm just going to do one stitch on that side to bring those two together 
And that just kind of um, lines up those loops. I'm going to come around the front and go through that again just to kind of knot that. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it over now and in the direction of my first stitches I'm going to run my thread through there and I'm ending this now. I've pretty much given you the basics of how to make a dorset button and now it's up to you to just get creative with it and use, you know, you might have other stitches that you do if you do embroidery, um, if you're a silk flower maker, you know, there's all kinds of things, ways that you can incorporate this into whatever work or whatever your outlet is for creativity. And hopefully this has given you some ideas. So I'm just running behind a few of the stitches, just making sure that this end is going to be completely secure and it's not going to pop out on me. And one of the great things about it, uh, doing it behind the thread, its own color, you're not going to see it. I'm going to go ahead and snip that. And there we have a dorset button. I hope you've enjoyed learning about dorset buttons and also that it has maybe sparked a little bit of um, creativity in how you can use this in your own work and incorporating it into your art quilts or your journal making, whatever it is that you enjoy doing. Please remember to stay healthy, stay happy, and until next week, have a great one.